The sequential workflow that follows outlines the process of designing and manufacturing the Bruxer Solid Zirconia Full Arch Implant Prosthesis, providing a step-by-step -step restorative protocol from the lab's perspective. The fabrication process combines CAD-CAM technology and traditional laboratory techniques to produce a durable, aesthetic, and well-fitting prosthesis. After the doctor takes and submits the preliminary impression to the lab, the case is evaluated and the working model is fabricated. First, implant analogs are attached to the impression copings and silicone-based soft tissue material is injected into the impression tray and allowed to dry for five minutes. This provides precise reproduction of the gingival contours around the margins of the copings. Ivory stone is then poured into the tray allowed to set and trimmed. The impression copings are detached from the analogs and the preliminary working model with soft tissue in place is complete. Next, the bite block is fabricated. Non-engaging titanium cylinders housing prosthetic screws are attached to each implant analog in the working model to ensure that there is no movement when the bite block is fabricated, as well as when the jaw relations are recorded by the doctor. Separator is applied to the model to prevent wax from adhering. Lycure base plate material is molded over and around the cylinders and pressed down over the working model, ensuring that no material obstructs the cylinder holes. The base plate is then trimmed along the facial and lingual walls that overlap the alveolar ridge. After light curing the base plate on the working model, the titanium cylinders are unscrewed and the base plate is removed from the model and inverted to complete the curing process. The now hardened facial and lingual flanges are reduced so that they are scalloped and short and do not extend over the ridge. The titanium cylinders, which remain attached to the trimmed base plate, are screwed back into the working model and cut down to within a few millimeters of the base plate. Pins are placed inside the shortened cylinders to prevent wax from flowing into the holes, allowing continued access through the cylinders to the underlying screws. Next, wax bite rims are curved to align with the alveolar ridge, placed over the pins, pressed down, and formed over the base plate. With a hot wax iron, the wax rim is attached to the base plate and shaped, and is then smoothed with a butane torch to form a solid, uniform bite block. The occlusal height of the bite block from the base of the vestibule should measure approximately 18 millimeters and is trimmed accordingly. To facilitate jaw function, the bilateral posterior ends of the bite block are cut at 45 degree angles in an anterior-posterior direction. Access holes are created where the pins served as guides through the wax to the underlying screws. After unscrewing it from the model, the bite block is trimmed and shaped as needed to form a smooth surface. It is then reseated on the model, and bilateral V-notches or retention grooves are carved into the posterior occlusal surfaces. These notches are added for the purpose of retaining impression material from the opposing arch in order to provide accuracy in recording the patient's bite. The bite block is then ready to be sent to the doctor. After the doctor takes the jaw relation records, bite registration, and impressions of the opposing dentition and current denture, the definitive restoration option is determined by the lab. The bite block is secured to the working model and mounted on the articulator, and the case is evaluated for possible implant trajectory issues. Multi-unit abutments may be required to correct implant angulation, accommodate screw access holes that are angled too far to the facial, or connect the prosthesis to implants that are positioned more than 2 mm subgingival. Note that at least 10 mm of vertical clearance is required for the Bruxer Solid Zirconia Full Arch Implant Prosthesis. If the implant angulation and vertical clearance are acceptable, the process continues with the fabrication of the implant verification jig, custom tray, and denture setup in wax. 
The denture setup is used as a preliminary wax try-in for the patient and doctor to assess the function and aesthetics of what will ultimately become the final prosthesis, so meticulous care must be taken to achieve an accurate prototype. After verification of tooth color and size, the process of adding teeth to the facial surface of the bite block begins at the central incisors and proceeds posteriorly. The teeth are set in wax based on generally accepted denture setup guidelines. During this process, protrusive and lateral excursive movements are repeatedly assessed to confirm appropriate tooth position and occlusion. As the individual teeth are positioned on the bite rim, holes may need to be drilled in one or more of the teeth to create access to an underlying implant in the event that the placement of a tooth obscures its position. The gingival margins are clearly defined and any depressions in the facial and lingual walls are evened out. The facial and lingual walls are carved out along the ridge to reduce the overall thickness of the appliance. The surface of the appliance is then brushed and cleaned on a polishing lathe. The final festooning of teeth proceeds as the gingival anatomy is more intricately outlined along the facial and lingual margins. Finally, the appliance is placed back onto the articulator and its occlusal relationship to the opposing arch is verified. Next, the lab proceeds with the fabrication of the implant verification jig, which will be used to ensure a passive fit of the final prosthesis. Temporary titanium cylinders and guide pins are selected. Separator is brushed onto the soft tissue model. The titanium cylinders are screwed into the implant analogs or, in cases where they are required, the multi-unit abutments. Light cure material is rolled out in a thin band, wrapped around the cylinders and pressed together, ensuring that it does not rest on the soft tissue model where it would prevent impression material from flowing under the jig and around each cylinder. The implant verification jig is light cured and remains in place on the model during the next step, fabrication of the custom tray. The process for creating a custom tray begins with forming warm soft wax over the implant verification jig and onto the model. Additional wax is added to remove any undercuts and petroleum jelly is applied to the model to facilitate easy removal of the custom tray. The custom tray is light cured, and while the wax is still warm, the tray is removed from the model, inverted, and cured again. Holes are opened in the tray at the position of each titanium cylinder of the verification jig. The edges of the custom tray are trimmed, and its fit over the model is verified. The implant verification jig is then sectioned and numbered, and forwarded to the doctor along with the custom tray and the wax setup. If the decision was made to utilize multi-unit abutments, they will also be delivered to the doctor at this time. Once the wax setup has been approved and the final impression containing the implant verification jig has been taken, the master cast is poured and the provisional CAD-CAM implant prosthesis is fabricated. First, the lab pours the master model as a guide to confirm that the definitive prosthesis is accurately aligned with the implants. The wax setup is then attached to the model and mounted on the articulator. An index putty matrix is fabricated, which will later be used to verify that the tooth positioning and incisal edges of the approved wax setup are replicated in the final prosthesis. Next, a series of scans is taken to produce an accurate digital depiction of the model and approved setup. Scans are taken of the approved wax setup on the model, the model with scanning abutments in place, and the model with soft tissue only. Then the wax setup is scanned alone. The CAD-CAM Dental Software Program 3Shape Dental Designer automatically aligns the scanning abutments with the soft tissue model and provides an accurate, distortion-free representation of the prosthesis and master model, including the position and angulation of the implants. From this information, a provisional implant prosthesis which allows the patient to evaluate the proposed restoration prior to fabrication of the final prosthesis is digitally designed. Then, the provisional is milled from polymethyl methacrylate, a biocompatible material that is easily adjusted to fine-tune occlusion. 
The milled provisional denture replicates the approved wax setup and is stained to function as a lifelike temporary restoration during the trial period. After completion of the trial period and patient approval of the restorative design, the Bruxer Full Arch Implant Prosthesis is ready for fabrication. If any significant adjustments are required, the provisional implant prosthesis is returned to the lab so a new series of scans can be taken and the definitive design can be updated, ensuring a precise and accurate fit of the final restoration. Following milling, the full arch prosthesis is removed from the milling block and excess material is removed. The support structure is kept intact so the milled appliance can sit upright during the centering process. Before applying stain, a red pencil is used to define the gingival margins on both the facial and lingual surfaces. Preliminary staining of the prosthesis begins and three unique stains are applied to pattern the incisal edges of the dentition and soft tissue. The stained and milled prosthesis is then ready for centering. It is placed upright on its support structure in the center box and fully covered with the alumina center cover. After centering, the full arch prosthesis is removed from the support structure. The prosthesis is then sandblasted in preparation for final staining. The final staining process achieves natural looking aesthetics for the tooth and soft tissue surfaces of the final prosthesis. Next, the titanium abutments that connect the prosthesis to the implants are sandblasted. After applying an alloy primer to the abutments, they are cemented into the prosthesis. After removing any excess cement, the prosthesis is placed on the master model and a curing light is applied to the abutment basis. The model with the full arch prosthesis is placed into a light curing machine. After the light curing is complete, the final Bruxer Solid Zirconia Full Arch Implant Prosthesis is ready for delivery. After the doctor receives the prosthesis and delivers the final restoration, the lab fabricates an occlusal splint. The bite splint offers an added protection to the appliance itself and relieves undue stress on the temporomandibular joint. With the production of the Bruxer Solid Zirconia Full Arch Implant Prosthesis, the lab has played a leading role in the application of digital technology to restorative dentistry and the concomitant role of implants. Ultimately, it is the patient who benefits from the precision of the design and fabrication process by receiving a durable, well-fitting, and aesthetic restoration. <laughs>